Welcome to another edition of Building Code Buddy Online. This video is part two of the building permit process made simple. On this video, I will review types of work that are exempt from building permits for residential projects. The work exempt from building permits covered on this video can be found in the International Residential Code, Chapter 1, Scope and Administration, Section 105. The International Residential Code is adopted in 49 of the 50 states. Our friend Wisconsin is the only state that has not adopted the International Residential Code. However, it is still important to check with your local building department regarding the code adopted at the local level. An example I always give is the state of California. One of California's adopted building code is the California Residential Code, which is based on the International Residential Code. Therefore, the California Residential Code is the enforceable document and not the International Residential Code. You can access this interactive map which shows the codes adopted by states. You can also view the Building Inspection Career Path video for additional resources. The information on this video can also assist those of you preparing to take the Building Inspector exam. Throughout the video, I will provide useful tips, so be on the lookout. Now let's get started with types of work exempt from building permits, starting with building-related work. On this segment, I cover in-depth accessory structures, retaining walls, decks, and other elements, so stay tuned. It is important to understand how the code defines accessory structures, and I will explain shortly. There often seems to be confusion as to the types of work that are exempt from permits, but there is also plenty of confusion as to the types of structures that are exempt. The code defines an accessory structure as a structure that is an accessory to and incidental to a dwelling and is located on the same lot. Now let us further look at how the code defines a structure. A structure is that which is built or constructed. Pretty broad, isn't it? Other structures such as arbors and pergolas can fall under the definition and exemption, but check with your local building department before construction. Specifically, the code exempts accessory structures that are one story, detached, and less than 200 square feet in floor area. Let's look at examples. Would this structure be exempt from a permit if it is less than 200 square feet? Unfortunately, not. The exemption is for one-story structures. How about this less than 200 square foot single-story structure? It will be attached to the house. Is it exempt from a permit? Unfortunately not. The exemption is for detached structures. Therefore, a permit is required. Please note that installing electrical, mechanical, or plumbing within the exempt structure will require separate permits. Also, check if your property is located on a flood hazard zone. This will further determine if your structure will need permits. Accessing this link, you can search by address for properties that are located in a flood hazard zone. For any accessory structure exempt from a building permit, always check for local planning department restrictions before construction. Fences that are less than seven foot in height are exempt from building permits. Again, check for exemptions from your local planning department. For CMU block fences, check with your local building department. Some building departments require permits for these types of fences due to structural concerns. Also, fences fronting the public right away may require public works clearances due to visual obstruction concerns. So check with your public works department before constructing here. A common misconception is that gates fall in the category of fences. Unfortunately, they may not. In addition to building permits, fire department clearances may also be required. Retaining walls are exempt from building permits, providing they are less than four foot high, measured from the bottom of the retaining wall footing to the top of the wall, with no surcharge. Let's take a closer look at retaining walls and surcharge. Here you see an isometric drawing which depicts the retaining wall footing and the retaining wall. For this wall to be exempt, 
it must be no more than four foot from here, bottom of the footing, to here, top of wall. Let's look at this hillside scenario. Constructing a retaining wall to support this surcharge, even if the retaining wall is less than four foot from the bottom of the footing to the top of the wall, will require a permit. Here's an example of a retaining wall that could be exempt. Notice there is no surcharge and the wall appears to be less than four foot high. Sidewalks and driveways are exempt from building permits. However, if the sidewalk or driveway will affect the public right of way, encroachment permits may be required. That is generally work taking place on the sidewalk, driveway apron, and onto the street. Exterior painting is exempt from building permits. However, check with the planning department if your property is located in a design district. Papering is also exempt from building permits. Well, not this type of papering. This papering is exempt from building permits. Tiling and carpeting work are also exempt. So are cabinets and countertops. However, I will attempt to clarify some confusion. Generally, replacing existing cabinets and countertops with same are exempt from a permit. However, modifications of existing utilities or installation of new utilities are not exempt. Example, new or rearrangement of a sink or dishwasher, new or rearrangement of electrical, or new or rearrangement of mechanical. Any of those examples will require a permit. Prefabricated swimming pools are exempt from building permits providing they are less than 24 inches deep. Window awnings less than 54 inches from the exterior wall that do not require additional support are exempt from building permit. However, please check with your local planning department for restrictions. Again, awning must be supported by an exterior wall. In this example, the awning exceeds 54 inches from the wall, and it requires additional support. Therefore, it is not exempt from a permit. Some exterior decks are exempt from building permits. Let's take a closer look at the requirements. The decks must be less than 200 square feet, less than 30 inches above grade, detached from the structure, and the deck may not serve the required exit door in order to be exempt from building permit. Moving on to electrical work exempt from building permits. First on the exemption list is temporary decorative lighting such as Christmas lights, rope lighting is exempt from building permit, reinstallation of an attachment plug receptacle excluding the outlet is exempt from a permit, replacing breakers of required capacity in the same location is exempt from a permit. Low voltage wiring, devices, appliances, and apparatus are exempt from permit. Minor repairs including replacement of lamps are exempt from permit. Or the connection of portable equipment to existing receptacles. And now, gas related work exempt from building permit. Portable heating, cooking, and clothes drying appliances are exempt. However, if the installation of the clothes drying appliance will require the installation of gas piping, electrical, water, or sewer, a permit will be required. Replacing minor parts of equipment are exempt, providing equipment is not made unsafe. Portable fuel cell appliances that are not connected to piping or the grid are exempt. This is an example of a fuel cell that would require a permit. Next, mechanical work exempt from building permits, which includes portable heating, ventilation, and cooling equipment, steam, hot, or chilled water piping within equipment, replacement of equipment parts, portable evaporative coolers, and residential refrigeration systems. However, if the appliance requires the installation of an electrical receptacle, 
a permit is required. And now plumbing work that is exempt from building permit. Stopping leaks in sewer or water pipes is exempt from permit. However, removal and replacement of leaking pipes requires a permit. Clearing stoppages or repairing leaks in pipes and the removal and reinstallation of water closets is exempt from a permit, but not replacing or rearrangement pipes or fixtures. Ordinary repairs exempt from building permits, which includes minor electrical previously covered in the electrical segment. However, repairs may not include cutting away of any walls, partitions, or portions thereof, or the removal or cutting away of any structural components of a building. Ordinary repairs cannot consist of removal, changing, or rearranging of required emergency escapes in a building. Additions, alterations, replacement, or relocating water, sewer, or gas pipes are not exempt. Similarly, electrical wiring or mechanical work are not exempt from a permit. And finally, under work exempt from building permits are public agencies, such as local utility companies. Such agencies are exempt for work to their generation, transmission, distribution, metering equipment. However, those agencies are not exempt from building permits for work that is regulated by the building codes. I am also including emergency repairs which the building code allows to be made prior to the submittal of a building permit application on the condition that the permit application is submitted the next business day for work such as emergency electrical repairs due to weather related damages, emergency gas repairs due to mechanical damages, or if a water heater happens to spring a leak during the weekend. We all know those happen. These examples are not inclusive, however. There may be other emergency repairs included by your local building department, such as emergency re-roof repairs, emergency furnace repairs, emergency plumbing repairs, or emergency water pipe repairs. However, consult with your local building department for confirmation. And once again, conducting emergency repairs requires a submittal of the building permit application on the next business day. Well, folks, I hope you found this information of value. I will leave you with my personal advice regarding work exempt from building permits. First, remember that work discussed on this video are exemptions from building permits only. Such work may require clearances from other departments, but start with your local building department. They are usually the hub of the permitting process and they will guide you accordingly. Access your local building department's webpage for helpful resources. You can find informational handouts, inspection checklists, online portals to check permit history on properties, schedule inspections, check status of submitted projects, and more. Also, remember that building codes are available online and free of cost. Links to access codes and other helpful resources are on the description box or on some of my other videos, so check them out. That is all for now. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to get alerts on future topics such as the code enforcement process and how to clear your violation, residential building inspections, how to better your chances at passing first time, the building permit process for new and current business owners, accessory dwelling units, and more. You don't want to miss it, so stay tuned. Once again, thank you for viewing and see you next time.